Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are we excited to be in God's presence? If you have anyone that wants to give glory to God this morning, if you have anyone that wants to appreciate Him for His faithfulness, anyone that wants to thank Him for His goodness, for His deliverance, for His service, the last time we met like this was on the 6th of March. That's almost exactly six months ago. And between then and now, God has kept you. God has sustained you. God has provided for you. God has guided you. For so by His mercies, you have not been concerned. God will be happy saying, If the Lord has not been on our side, He has not allowed you to be numbered among those that were inflicted by the pandemic.
with the heart of gratitude. Daddy, we return all the praise for you. Thank you for life. Thank you for preservation. Thank you for counting us among the living that can return. Between March and now, many have died. Many have been saved without the government, but you kept us. You kept our families. You preserved us as a church. You didn't allow us to recourse any death as a result of the, of the pandemic. That day, you, you kept us from all evil. You didn't allow our names to be numbered among those impacted by the pandemic. That day, we return all the glory to you. We return all the adoration to you. And with a grateful heart, with a heart of gratitude, we say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. We return all the glory unto you. It's not because we know what to do. It's not because we observe all the precautions. It's not because we were smart, but it's by your message. And we have come to give you thanks. We have come to return all the glory and honor to your holy name. And we say, Peter, I will lift it up and exalt it in the name of Jesus. And Father, as we continue this morning, let your presence continue with us. Let your mighty hand be upon us. And let your name be glorified in all that we will do in the name of Jesus. That we will pray as we go into your word. We say none of man, oh God, but all of you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because you will speak to us. Thank you, Lord, because you will instruct us and lead us in the way we should go. To you be all the glory and honor, Lord. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor we are back. can make it this morning. Uh, it's, it's been by his faithfulness. Uh, I've not seen you for a long time. Where have you all been? For the last six months. You are all welcome to church. Again in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Uh, today is our Thanksgiving and we have limited time. Uh, so very quickly within the time that I have, I'm looking at my word by level 30. I must finish the message so that we can have time for our Thanksgiving and before we close. Amen. Uh, so I'll be reading from the book of 2 Chronicles 20. I will read from verse 5. 2 Chronicles 20, and I'll be reading from verse 5. Amen. <clears throat> Are we there? Then I'll speak of sin. Then Jehoshaphat was stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord before the court, and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms? Of the, over all the kingdoms of the nations, and in your hand is their God's power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you. Are you not our God, who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel, and gave it to the descendants of Abraham your friend forever? And they dwelt, they dwelt in it, and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, If disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we, we stand before this temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple, and cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and say, and now here are the people of Ammon, Moab, Ammon, Seir, whom you will not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and did not destroy them. Here they have rewarded us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Now all Judah, with their little ones, their wives and their children, stood before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jahaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benia, the son of Jeel, the son of Matania, a Levite of the sons of Hassan, in the midst of the assembly. And he said, Listen, all you of Judah and you in Abraham of Jerusalem, you, King Jehoshaphat, 
Thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the head of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, who is with you, O Judah, O RCP, and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And the Oshabbat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. Then the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korathites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. So they rose early in the morning and went into the wilderness of Tekwa. And as they went, Joshua stood and said, Hear me, O Jerusalem, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophet, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who would sing to the Lord, and who would praise the beauty of holiness, as they went out before the army, and were saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mosiah, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mosiah to brutally kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they had to destroy one another. That will be the testimony of your enemies this month in the name of Jesus. And so, when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked towards the multitude, and there were dead bodies falling on the head. No one had escaped. May the Lord bless the reading of His word in the name of Jesus. And this morning, I'm speaking on the title of the message is Praise in Crisis. It's Praise in crisis. Now, where we read from the book of Chronicles, if you look from First Chronicles chapter 1, you will see that the book of Chronicles is a documentation of the acts, the, of the hearts and the lives of the kings of Israel. In fact, the meaning of Chronicles, the traditionally meaning, Chronicles actually means a factual documentation of events in the order in which they occur. That's the meaning of Chronicles. He said it's a factual documentation of events in the order in which they occur. So the book of Chronicles is a factual documentation of the life and history of the Israelites from Adam to Abraham. And then by the time it got to chapter 2 of 1 Chronicles, they began to document the acts of the kings of Israel, starting with the life of Saul, they documented the life of David, and by the end of First Chronicles, David was rounding up his throne, and Solomon was introduced in First Chronicles as the new king of Israel. Do you remember Solomon? Solomon was the man, was the son that Bathsheba, the, the, the wife of Uriah, gave birth to, to David. You remember Solomon? His mother was, 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 was married in an imperfect union. David killed her husband to be able to marry her. And when the first of child, Solomon was the second son that was born by Bathsheba. And isn't it interesting that God will choose such a son from an imperfect union to lead his people? The first point I want to make this morning is that it does not matter your background. It does not matter where you are coming from. It does not matter how imperfect your history might be. When the Lord has decided to bless you, no man can stop him. When the Lord has said to lift you up, no man can hinder him. He does not consult with any man. He does not look for perfect situations and circumstances. He does not look for perfect perfect background. The Bible says he lifts up the poor and calls him, he lifts up the poor from the dung here and calls him to sit in high places with the praises of his people. So, the first thing I've come to tell you this morning is don't give up on yourself. 
Because God is not true with you yet. Don't give up on your aspiration. Don't give up on your passions and desire. You may have made mistakes. The way you came here may not be perfect. There may have been issues on the way. But if your heart is right and, right and, and perfect before him, he will take you and bless you beyond measure. So Solomon, a son from an imperfect union, was became the king of Israel. And the Bible recorded in 7 Chronicles 7 that Solomon built a temple for the Lord and dedicated it. And in 7 Chronicles chapter 7, when you begin to read from verse 5, the Bible said, And Solomon dedicated the house of God, and he offered to God 22,000 booths and 120,000 sheep as an offering. Can you imagine that kind of offering? He said, God, I did not deserve where I am. God, I'm not supposed to be king. But you showed me mercy. And he decided to do what no man has ever done before. And because he did what no man has ever done before, Bible recorded that God caused him to experience what no man had experienced. My number two point this morning, when your heart is perfect before him, when you give yourself only to his service, and you do not care about who and who is watching who is not working, and you serve him with the whole of your heart, he will do to you what no man has ever experienced before. All he's looking for is a perfect heart. Proverbs 16 verse 7 said, When the heart of a man pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Bible said, because the heart of Solomon was right with God, God gave him rest throughout his kingdom. Solomon is the only king of Israel that never fought a battle because his heart was right with God. I have come to tell you this morning, you do not need to bother about the opposition. You do not need to bother about that unruly man. You do not need to bother about that antagonizing colleague. All you need to do is for your way to be right before God. And when your way is perfect before Him, even those that are called your enemy, they begin to walk in your favor. I speak to you in this month of divine turnaround that those that are rising against you, they begin to work for you in the name of Jesus. That every opposition against your progress, every opposition against your upliftment, every opposition against your destiny, that they come crashing down to them in the name of Jesus. Because it is your turn, it is your month of divine turnaround. God will turn around situations and circumstances and cause those that are at war with you to become at peace with you. When you resume all this path, you will discover that, that manager that are behind you somehow and have refused to promote you, begin to speak in your favor. You will discover that that neighbor that have been antagonizing you and say, what are you doing in this Qatar? You will see God touching their heart and it will become to favor you. When your heart pleases the Lord, he said, when the heart of a man pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies. To be at peace. Solomon was at peace with God. His heart was right with God. And God gave him rest. Throughout all his kingdom. And when Solomon died. His son Rehoboam took over. And when Rehoboam took over. His heart was not perfect before God. He didn't walk in the ways of his father. Bible said he refused to listen to wise counsel. And so the kingdom was divided at his time. But because of God's mercy, because of God of Abraham, of Isaac and Jacob, because of the covenant he had made with David, he said, I will still allow a, a seat for David in the land of Israel. He talks about the covenant of the fathers. I don't have time to go there, but one of these Sundays will talk about the covenant of the fathers. But because of the covenant that God had with David, Rehoboam was spared the disgrace of being dethroned. And so Jeroboam took ten kings 
know. And Rehoboam took only to Judah and Benjamin. I speak to you in the name of Jesus. That the covenant of, of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That the covenant of David, because you are spiritual children of David, that covenant we speak on your behalf in the name of Jesus. That covenant we speak mercy in the name of Jesus. Where you deserve judgment, that covenant begin to speak mercy for you. That covenant begin to deliver into your heart that which you do not desire. In the name of Jesus. Rehoboam led Judah and, and, and Benjamin. And then when we go to 2 Chronicles chapter 13, Bible said Rehoboam died and his son Abijah took over from him. When I was reading the scripture, I saw Abijah. I remember how many of you, when you were growing up, you watched that NTA movie called Abijah. How many of us watched it? Abijah. Abijah. And he has, he has, he has this, uh, is it uh, Abdel or something? This spirit that tells him what is supposed to happen. When I read that Abijah was the son of Rehoboam, I said, no wonder he was so powerful. <laughs> Amen. For those of you that didn't know what I'm talking about, when we were growing up, it was a, a play on Nigerian TV uh, series, and it was Abijah. I can't remember the title of the play, but this man was very powerful, and his name is Abijah. So when I saw it, I said, oh, Abijah is actually the son of Rehoboam. Amen. And it don't know that the way Adjon used to speak to Abijah, to warn him of dangers ahead, that is the way God speaks to his children. That is the way the Holy Spirit speaks to his children, to warn us ahead of things to happen. Nothing happens in that city without Abijah knowing about it. Because Adjon was telling him, and if our heart are right with God, if our heart are in love with God, nothing will happen in Qatar without God speaking it to us. Without the Holy Spirit telling us and saying, so, my son, why they don't go out today? I don't say I should tell you. They have gathered to kill you. But you should not go by that way of river. Go by the way of the valley. And you will wake up in the morning. And the Holy Spirit will say, Joshua, Joshua. I don't say I should tell you. That's the way I don't used to say. But it is so funny. I don't say I should tell you. The Holy Spirit begins to instruct us in the way that we should go. But Abijah took over from Rehoboam. And Bible said, even in his days, war arose against him. Because in verse 9, in verse 13 of 2 Chronicles, chapter 13, verse, verse 13, Bible said, the people of Jeroboam, Israel, the Israelites, they rose against the people of Judah. And they began to war against them. And in verse 10 of 2 Chronicles 13, Bible said they ambushed the children of Israel. And the children of Israel, suddenly, I mean the children of Judah, led by Habijah, suddenly discovered that they were in the middle. The Israelites were behind them. The Israelites were in front of them. And they were in the middle. To make matters worse, Judah came to war with 400,000 people. Israel came to war with 800,000 people and they were surrounded and they were in this place of hopelessness. They thought all is lost. They thought this is the head of it. But Bible recorded in verse 14, in verse 15, Bible said, and they cried out unto the Lord and the Levites began to blow the trumpet in the midst of the battle. These people began to praise the Lord. The battle seems lost. They were in serious crisis. They were about to be alienated. But Bible said they began to blow trumpet. They began to praise the Lord. They began to celebrate God in the battle. And Bible said as they were praising, what did God do? I said God undoed the, the Israelites and defeated them before the children of Judah. Now you will notice that they did not wait for the battle to end before they gave praise. Right in the middle of the battle, when they thought all was lost, they began to praise the Lord. They praised Him in crisis. Many of us will say, I will wait till I get the job before I test it, before I thank the Lord. Some will say, I will wait till I am healed before I will praise the Lord. Some will say, I will wait 
it till I get the promotion. Before I thank the Lord. Others will say, I will wait till the child come back home. And then I will praise the Lord. But Abijah and the people of Judah said, Whether the child has come home or not, even as I am in this battle, I am still going to praise the Lord. <laughs> the job has been lost. I am looking for the next job. It is not coming yet, but I will still be praising the Lord. The child is gone and is left home. I will still be praising the Lord. Because I know when I praise him in crisis, he appears and turns around for my good. No, maybe I have been devoted. Maybe my salary has been cut. But in the midst of that financial difficulty, I will keep praising the Lord. They did not wait until the battle has been won. But they praised God in crisis. And when they praised Him where they were, God showed up for them. And this is a trend you will see throughout the scripture. People praising God. Because when Abijah died, and his son Hassa took over from, from him. In 2 Chronicles chapter 14, when you begin to read, Bible said in verse 5, 2 Chronicles 14, Bible said, and in 2 Chronicles 14, verse 9, Bible said, and Zerah, the Ethiopian, came and went more against Asa. When it was the time of, of, of Abijah, it was 400,000 against 800,000. But when it got to Asa, Bible said the Ethiopians came with an army of 1.3 million soldiers against Judah's army of 500,000. That is more than two. It's almost a factor of three. From generation to generation, the war became tougher. Opposition doubled and then tripled. But Bible recorded in 7 Corinthians chapter 14 that Asa knew what his father Abijah did. And when he was in this crisis, in verse 9, he, he, he spoke to God. He said, Oh Lord my God, to her is nothing before you. You can save with few or with many. You deliver those that are powerless. These people are strong for us, but our eyes on you. Do you know what Asa was doing? Asa was praising God because praise is extolling the virtues of God. It is praising God for his personality. Asa was saying, Lord, you are the deliverer. Asa was saying, Lord, you are Jehovah Rapha. Asa was saying, you are the one that made the way where there seems to be no way. And Asa was saying, you are the one that opens and no one closes. You are the one that closes and no one opens. Your words are yea and amen. Your word cannot be changed. Your word cannot be tampered. Because you are Jehovah Hell Shaddai. All power belongs to you. Asa was praising God in the midst of crisis. 500,000 soldiers against 1.3 million soldiers. Asa was praising God. And Bible said suddenly. Somebody said suddenly. Suddenly. He said the Lord struck the Ethiopians. He said they fled before the children of Judah. The children of Judah pursued them. Bible said the God overthrew them. They could not recover. They were broken before God. And the children of Israel took spoils innumerable. I speak to you in this month of divine turnaround that as you praise Him in crisis, you see God confuting your enemy. You see Him uprooting every opposition. The Lord will overthrow them. The Lord will break them. Whatever has kept you down in this month of divine turnaround, the Lord is releasing you in the name of Jesus. As I praise God in crisis, and the enemy was defeated, and then Asa died, 
And when it got to chapter 17 of 7 Chronicles, Bible said Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned in his stead. You see the story where it's coming from? Bible said Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned in his stead. And chapter 17, chapter 18, chapter 19 was describing Jehoshaphat. Bible said Jehoshaphat had a perfect heart before God. Bible said he loved the Lord. Bible said he appointed teachers and Levites across the cities of Judah and Benjamin. And they began to teach the people about the word of God. During the time of Jehoshaphat, the word of God spread widely across the cities. As the waters covered the sea, people came back to the Lord. Jehoshaphat pulled down the stronghold of, of Babylon. He destroyed every spring and contrary altar. His heart was perfect before God. But in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 from verse 1, Bible said, as perfect as he was, a multitude arose against him. The fact that you are born again, that your heart is right with God, does not mean that war will not arise. It does not mean that contention will not come. It only means that when it comes and you praise him in the midst of that crisis, he will fight for you. The presence of Jesus does not mean the absence of the storm. It only means that when the storm comes, it will not overwhelm you. He said, in this world you will have men tribulation but be of good cheer because I have overcome he said you will not need to fight in this battle the battle we face in our life we do, we do not need to fight in it if only we will hand over that battle to Jesus to fight on our behalf he said when you pass through waters not if when you pass they will not overwhelm you in the day of Abijah it was 400,000 against 800. In the days of Asha, it was 500,000 against 1.3. But when it got to Jehoshaphat, Bible said three kingdoms came against him. And there were so many that the Bible could not record their number. And God, the Bible referred to them as a great multitude. And they came against the people of God. And in, 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 in 2 Chronicles 20, when you read from verse 13, Bible said, and when this war came against, against Jehoshaphat, he gathered his tomb in the midst of the new court before the house of God, together with the people of Judah, their men, their wives, their children. And Bible said they began to cry to the Lord. They began to worship God. There are some war that will come against you that will need corporate anointing to deal with. There are some things you cannot fight by yourself that you need to come together as we have together. And we praise God like no one has ever praised it before. And then we see God intervening and turning things around for us. Jehoshaphat stood with the people and they prayed. And Bible said, as they were praying and they were worshiping and bowed down and worshiping, the prophet came and declared to Jehoshaphat and the people, he said, This is not your battle because the Lord will fight for you. Amen. John, the way I've come to tell you this morning, it is not your battle. The Lord will fight for you. Amen. The Lord will intervene on your behalf. Amen. That negative report will be struck out. Amen. That sickness will be uprooted. Amen. That home will be restored. Amen. That earth will come back. That job will flourish. Amen. That business will prosper. Amen. Bible said the prophet prophesied to them. And after the prophet has prophesied, Bible said they believe what the prophet has said, and they began to sing with loud voice, and they were celebrating God throughout the night. And Bible said when it was early in the morning, they stepped out of where they were. And do you guess what they did? They put the choir in front, and Joshua said, "Choir, begin to go ahead of me." And choir began to sing and praise the Lord. They began to say, "Praise the Lord." For his message endures forever. Bible said, as they were singing and going, as they were singing and praising the Lord in the midst of crisis, Bible said, 
the Lord rose up against the Hamonites, the Moabites, and the people of Mount Zion. They joined together and killed each other until not a single one of them was remaining. Praise! <laughs> Praise gives you, delivers into your heart and also receives people. Because we noticed that the Israelites, the uh, Joshua and the people did not even ask God, Lord, go and fight this battle. But Bible said, when they were praising, in the midst of that crisis, God arose and turned the enemies against themselves. When you praise Him, He delivers into your heart and also seated favor. When you praise Him, it, it, it causes things to grow. In fact, when you nothing will stand God in the midst of crisis, praise was so powerful that it got the head of John the Baptist. Bible said John the Baptist was the greatest prophet. There is no man like him. Then also, Jesus said he is the greatest among men. But praise was so powerful that when Herodias began to dance before King Herod, the king was so pleased that he says, tell me what do you want? The, the Lord said, I want the head of John the Baptist. As powerful and anointed as John the Baptist was, his head will not withstand praise. I tell you, there is no strong hold that is strong enough to withstand praise. There is no anger, there is no power, there is no plot, there is no problem that is strong enough to stand against the praise of God. Time will fail me to tell you about testimonies. But I know that when you praise it with a right heart, praise grants you access. It grants you unlimited access to the treasures of heaven. Praise grants you unrestrained, unconstrained, unlimited access to the treasures of heaven. When you praise it, that which has been stagnant becomes to move forward. John chapter 6 from verse 9. Bible said, on the, on the platform of praise, five loaves and two fishes fed 2,000, I mean 5,000 people. The meal that was enough for one king but became multiplied to the extent of feeding 5,000 people. The reason why there is no promotion in that job is because instead of praising, you have been murmuring. Some of you have been murmuring and complaining about the job we have. Instead of praising it. And when you murmur and complain, he leaves. The Bible says in Psalm 67 verse 5, let the people praise you, oh God, let the people praise you. And then the heart will yield its increase and the Lord will bless us. And when the people refuse to praise God, what happens? The heart refuses to hear this increase and God refuses to bless us. So instead of complaining and grumbling about that hope, about oh, begin to appreciate Him. I have come to tell you this morning, I don't know the multitude that you are facing. I don't know the multitude that is fighting against you. Maybe that job has been lost. But I've come to tell you this morning, the reason you did not lose everything is God. If at all you have lost anything, the reason you have not lost everything is God. God is the reason you have not lost everything. The job may be lost, but your life is not lost. Your salary may be cut, but you still have the job. The son may have left home, but thank God is still alive. And if you just learn to praise God in those crises, as God intervened for those kings, you see him coming in and intervening in your own situation. Yeah. David, the great grandfather of all of them, Bible said he was a man after God's own heart. David did not become a man after God's own heart because of the heart of his work. But David praised his way into God's heart. How did I know that? Because in Psalm 55 verse 17, David said, Three times a day, I will, I will pray to God. I will pray to God in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. But when it got to Psalm 119, verse 64, David said, seven times in a day will I praise God. David was praising him more than he was praying. And God looked at his praise and said, this is a man 
after my own heart. Your praise, intense demon, your gratitude, your gratitude, intense demon for his heart, and in praise for his personality, will determine the greatness of your journey in this life. If only we will learn to praise him in, in, in crisis, then you will see him stepping in and turning around for you. And today, from this morning beginning, I see him intervening in your situation. Amen. I see him stepping in for you. Amen. As you arise and begin to praise him, I see him walking things in your favor. Amen. I see walls crumbling down. Amen. I see the Red Sea is being parted. I see opposition being crushed Amen. on the platform of praise. As you praise him this morning, I see him delivering into your heart. Even though that divine turnaround is exchanging your sorrow for his joy. And he's turning everything around for you and making all things to become new. Let's go and have to begin to praise him. Let's go and to begin to praise him. Just begin to celebrate him. I don't know the multitude that are fighting against you. I don't know the multitude you are fighting. Maybe it's the multitude at the office. Maybe your multitude is at home. Maybe your multitude is with your husband. Maybe your multitude is with your wife. Maybe your multitude is with your children. Maybe it is with your health or your finances. All you need to do is to praise them in crisis. And when you praise them, there is a divine exchange. He begins to exchange your weakness for his strength. He begins to fight your enemies. Begin to praise him. Begin to praise him right now. Praise him for that which is not enough. Praise him for that which has so much trouble. Praise him for the pains you are going through. Praise him for the bodies upon your heart. Praise him for those disappointments. Praise him for those faults. Praise him for those sadness. Just praise him where you are. Wherever you are, just begin to praise him. Until your, until your desire becomes a manifestation. Keep praising him for what is in your hand. Keep praising him for what is in your hand. Just celebrate his holiness. Just celebrate his faithfulness. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are praying.